Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You're very welcome to Holy Trinity Church, Ockram, for this online service as we celebrate the 10th Sunday after Trinity. In a moment of quiet, we invite God's forgiveness and healing into our lives as we confess our sins. You made us to be one family, yet we have divided humanity. Lord, have mercy. You were born a Jew to reconcile all people. Yet we have brought disharmony amongst races. Christ have mercy. You rejoice in our differences, yet we make them a cause of enmity. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We bring to God in prayer all those things which are uppermost on our hearts today. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, Give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 56, beginning to read at the first verse. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep his Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at the 21st verse. Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented with a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. 
She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. If you had to pick one character from the Bible who you most identify with, who would it be? That's a question I've pondered a fair bit. And I think the one person I'd probably pick from the whole Bible is the Canaanite woman described in today's Gospel reading. That's such an unusual scene, isn't it? Because it presents Jesus in a, Jesus' behaviour in a way that shocks us. We're surprised that he ignores the desperate Canaanite woman in her need. We're stunned by the harsh words that he uses when he does finally talk to her. We're staggered that even then he refuses point blank to help her, simply because She's a foreigner. The more we hear, the more we want to side with the Canaanite woman instead of siding with Jesus. Her indignation becomes ours. Why won't Jesus help her? Her desperation rises up in us too. If Jesus won't help her poor, tormented daughter, what hope is there? Before long, we want to stand shoulder to shoulder with her as she fights her corner, meeting Jesus' arguments blow for blow, refusing to take no for an answer. All of that strikes a particular chord with me, because one of the things that upsets me most is the thought of people feeling that somehow, for some reason, they're excluded from God's love, that God's forgiveness and grace is not something available to them. For me, the worst thing in the world is the thought of someone who believes themselves to, to be beyond the scope of God's love and mercy. Maybe because of the mistakes they've made, the regrets they harbour, or because of the scars that have been inflicted upon them, or because they have been unhappy in their dealings with the church and do not feel that there is a welcome for them here. The very thought of someone who feels like that to be beyond the reach of God's love makes me want to jump up and shout and scream and fight on their behalf like the Canaanite woman. Don't settle for that. Don't let yourself be left on the outside. Get up and fight your corner. Don't take no for an answer. And the same part of me gets just as animated when those of us who feel comfortable going to church, who maybe don't live with the same scars of regret or past hurts, try to define the limits of the scope of God's love in a way that conveniently includes us, but excludes people who aren't like us. That makes me want to take a big run at those imaginary boundary lines and push them back with all my might. 
If there is a limit to God's grace, then it's certainly not for us to decide where that line falls. And it's not our job to put a security fence up around it. A wise person once said, the church is the only institution that exists primarily for the benefit of those who are not its members. As a church, our job is to reach out to the very people who feel that they don't fit in here and to help them to discover God's love and grace and forgiveness and healing and acceptance. In the words of the psalm appointed for today, Psalm 67, let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Amen. Trusting in the abundance of God's grace, let us pray. God of compassion, your son had the scope of his admission expanded by the Canaanite woman's persistence. Challenge the boundaries we set to our compassion and concern. May all people everywhere know your loving faithfulness and may they delight in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hospitality, you set a place for all at your table. Open our hearts to embrace those who are easily excluded. Help us, your church, to proclaim your loving outreach to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, at your word, the sick girl was granted wholeness and healing. We pray for all who are sick at this time. Announce your freedom to all who are weighed down with worry, whether they're at home or in hospital or nursing homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you bring life to all who call upon your name. Draw into your eternal family all who have died in faith. In this world and in the next, draw us all, your precious children, to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We gather our prayers and praises into one as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Before our final blessing, may I remind you that on Sunday the 16th of August, there will be morning prayer in our Drahan Church at 10 o'clock and in Glan Church at midday. Then on Sunday the 23rd of August, There'll be morning prayer in St John's Church at 10 o'clock and St Catherine's Church at Haskra at midday. Finally, on Sunday the 30th of August, the fifth Sunday of the month, there'll be a service in Woodlawn Church at 10 o'clock and in Glen Church at midday. Now we ask for God's blessing upon us all. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all for whom you pray, 
and remain with you always. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.